In a previous demo, I was talking about how you use or how you choose which of your remote viewing tools you're going to be using, either the Hyper-V client viewer or the remote desktop um, connections using an internal network on Hyper-V manager. And someone mentioned, you know, great stuff. Make sure you include the fact that you can do this on a Hyper-V client system as well. So basically, Windows 8 includes Hyper-V client capabilities, which gives you all the same fantastic virtualization stuff you can do on uh, Server 2012, but from a client desktop. So that's greatly simplified how I deliver some of my demos directly from my, my desktop. So what you see right here is actually my corp image, my personal laptop. I've still customized it a bit so that it doesn't have the time and date and sort of stuff in the bottom corner, but I still have to personalize for my kind of stuff. Now, here's the caveat or troubleshoot that I came up with. If you're in Hyper-V Manager and you go up to Hyper-V Switch Manager and then you go ahead and you make a new internal switch and I want to call this guy here DemoNet, let's say, and it's an internal. And then I've got another demo here that I want to show off, which is, a, I don't know, IP address uh, management or something like that. So go back into Switch Manager, say internal as well, create virtual switch. And then choose this guy here as uh, IPAM. Hit OK. As you saw in the previous screencast, if you guys were watching, I now have under network connections two new entries that were added in, as well as my work ones, which is worth Wi Fi to use the corporate network at work and also my regular Ethernet connection. I was browsing around one day and trying to figure out why the heck my system was slow and why I was having problems, and it just dawned on me if I'm using the client hypervisor and I just added two new networks to it, uh, it's created two new network adapters for me as well. This potentially screwed up my binding order. And I'm like, okay, well, how the heck do I find the binding order? And after a little bit of searching, I couldn't find it through the user interface. I could do it through the command line stuff if I wanted to, but the easiest way to do it through the user interface is simply hitting the Alt key to bring up the menu and choosing the Advanced menu and choose Advanced Settings. This is something that's been there for a while. I forgot the easy way to access it. This is the easy way to access it. But you'll notice that my first thing it shows me with Advanced Settings is that my binding order or the connections listed in order in which they are accessed is now been updated to include both of my demo networks, which are really dead ends. They don't talk to anything else except for my demo machines. They don't talk to the outside world. Uh, they only talk between this system as well as my client systems that are in the VM's environment of those two virtual networks. Uh, and then my corporate attached Wi-Fi and corporate attached Ethernet. So you're going to want to make sure that you move these guys down the list below your production network environments. Simple thing, so stupid that I forgot to mention it, and I've figured it out and thought I'd save this screencast for you guys to be able to see as well. Make sure when you're making demo nets that are internal or um, private, one or the other, make sure that you move your binding order and adjust them so that your, your production corporate ones still stay active as the primaries. It's a simple thing. It's so simple to do. Very simple to forget to do it. Once you've done that, hit OK. Uh, you'll notice any kind of lags disappear because the system is no longer going to try to go down and use those network's DNS servers, as an example, uh, to be able to do stuff. And then eventually that would time out, and then it would eventually ask your corporate DNS server, where is Outlook.com, where is my Exchange server, and it would obviously get the answer. It times out in the first two ones first because you added them as part of your demo network from your Hyper-V client. So great tip, very simple stuff. Remember to check your binding orders and save yourself a little bit of grief and increase your speeds to make yourself happy once again. Thought I'd share that. Nice and simple. Thanks a lot for watching.